What is it, James? Jack the Ripper. No! I mean to rid Gotham of the Ripper. And who'll help me rid Gotham of you? I think all Batman fans know about Gotham by Gaslight. It's like, oh yeah, Batman versus Jack the Ripper. Duh, what a great idea. You have not seen Batman in a Sherlock Holmes era before. That late 19th century London foggy world, it just draws you in. Stick em, boys. I hardly gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? Barbara! I'll make myself decent. <laughs> I certainly hope not. I think we might have broken, boys. The bat! Mike Mignola was a real breath of fresh air. He does comics that appear in color, but his stuff is all about contrast. It is all about the deepest blacks and the brightest whites and playing them off each other. Compositionally, he's amazing. I wouldn't be surprised if it costs DC extra money to print this book because of the amount of blue and black ink. It's mostly dark. They probably should have printed it on black paper and just printed the colored parts because it's so dark. And so much about it graphically is what you don't see and what you don't know. I love Mike's Victorian Batman. He had that kind of half cape, the big goggles. It's not like a really super tight-fitting costume like what we're used to seeing Batman in. It's a little bit looser and a little bit more wrinkly, and he's got tall riding boots and big bulky belt and giant cuffed gloves. Just the idea that you can actually see Batman's eyes through those big goggles rather than, you know, the little squinty white eyes that he normally has kind of gives him a completely different aspect than you're used to seeing. And weirdly enough, that even kind of influenced how we treated the character of Batman and Bruce Wayne in this. I can take care of myself. Don't be so sure. He's more skilled than I would have thought. Batman in this story is a little bit more accessible. He's a little bit more human than we're used to seeing in Batman. I'm really happy to be doing what we did in the comics, which were Elseworlds. DC's got a tradition of doing what they used to call imaginary stories. You didn't have to live with the continuity that we were establishing in the real universe. The rules didn't apply. Gotham by Gaslight was literally the first comic book story that had an Elseworlds logo on it because we realized that it was something that we could do a lot with. The original story was very simple. It was just Batman meets Jack the Ripper. As we went along doing more Elseworlds, we realized that it shouldn't just be one character transported to another time. It should be all the characters that are in that hero's life can be transported back there as well. Ain't that right, Dickie? Names, Jason, remember? I tend to think of it as like watching an old episode of Gilligan's Island, where Gilligan would have like a dream, and it's like, oh, well, the, the professor is Sherlock Holmes, and Marianne is playing Eliza Doolittle, and you know, Gilligan is Jekyll and Hyde, you know? So you get the whole cast playing different characters. Ivy, the plant lady. Your oldest school chum, Master Harvey Dent. Gotham's premier alienist, Dr. Hugo Strange. James? Stay inside, Barbara. My men just can't seem to... To do anything, Chief Bullock. Selina's the most amazing gal, Bruce. You'll see. I think I already do. I think it was important to have Selina be a proactive investigator trying to protect the women of Gotham City. In a world where the expectations for women are very small, it's, I think, very empowering and exciting to see her ignore those social constraints. I'm many things but I'm nobody's pet. And this is also an era that's right before the suffragettes start, you know, their movements. I didn't take you for an anti-suffragist. The real world puts more context onto this story that we're telling. If you know history, you know it's coming. No. No, no! The subject matter is a little tricky for us because you're basically dealing with a serial killer who murders a bunch of prostitutes, you know? It's pretty potent stuff. Jack the Ripper is clearly a more violent villain than most of the Batman villains. He's icy, and he's almost professional. 
and he's clearly done this many times and gets that sick joy out of it. He's not just a killer, he's a surgical killer. He knows what he's doing. He knows where all the vulnerable spots are on you. And if he gets there first, he wins. From the very beginning of the piece, the dread is established quickly with that first murder, and it just hangs in the air. And may you select few truly enjoy this special preview of the Gotham World's Fair. This was like a real breath of fresh air for everybody. It was like, you know, wow, yeah, something that we've never done before, you know, just to really immerse ourselves into that. Victorian world was really exciting. The design crew and the storyboard guys, they were like super, super into it. They really dove into doing the historical research and, you know, making sure that things were, you know, correct as much as, as possible for the period. And, you know, even in terms of like signage and vehicles and what people wore, they would come in with like stacks of stuff that they'd found, you know, and it was like, wow, this is really cool. A stairway to heaven. A fully electronical lantern bright enough to illuminate the very celestial firmament above. When you think of Victorian London, the fog and the smoke and the new industrialization, the subway just coming around, it all echoes Gotham City with its kind of old-fashioned gothic soaring cathedral buildings and gargoyles on every gutter of every building. And I think there's a natural shared world there. It's so evocative of everything that kind of makes Batman who he is, the Sherlock Holmesiness of it, which is obviously, you know, one of Batman's ancestors, literarily. A mutual friend told me you like to solve mysteries ever since you were a boy. It really did enable us to do a real detective story with a Batman. Cheap paper with no watermark. The hand is that of a man with some education disguised to look like a man with none. There are gadgets but there's no computers. Batman's not Googling things for information. Now, I would say the Venn diagram of Batman fans and Sherlock Holmes fans, there's a huge intersection. Jack targets destitute women when the voiceless cry out, no one hears. When we got to this one, we all knew we were doing something special. And this isn't something that comes around every day. We always bring our A game. I would say we bring our A plus game to this one. Is there a problem, officer? We really expanded on the initial idea. Like, if you read the original graphic novel, you're still going to be surprised about what you see in this movie. We don't know how it's going to end. All the rules go out the window at a certain point during the movie. Agatha Christie created what she called a fair play mystery, which is she provides all the clues. So technically, if you took her to mystery court, she could say, no, that was there, that was there, and that was there. And you could extrapolate that and figure out who the killer is. And I'm hoping this is the same kind of piece. I mean, if you think you've seen it all, as far as Batman is concerned, you haven't. Because you're going to see this, and then you'll say, ah, now I've seen it all. <laughs> Until the next Elseworld we do.